Good morning, everyone. This is Ida with Created to Create. I wanted to do a, um, I kind of want to work on some stuff for beginner crafters because, sorry, I'm adjusting my phone. I get a, you know, I see a lot of swaps come and go, and I realize, you know, that um, uh, sometimes when we make tags and and all that we really don't make them like sturdy like they should be and um, because I see a lot of a lot of work and it's not that I'm criticizing but I hope that this video will help those who who want to figure out how to make the sturdy tags and um, so this is kind of like a beginner's uh, tutorial on how to make a sturdy tag for those who want to learn how to make it's a tag that, you know, someone will be glad to receive because, you know, it's not going to bend or anything. Thing A lot of times when we do a tag and we only send, do a one layer tag, well, that's not going to last very long. And, uh, or for me, in my opinion, it doesn't, especially when you do really, really good work, guys, you want to make sure that your tag is going to last because somebody might want to reuse that. So I'm going to show you my technique how I make my tags, and again, this is for beginners. A lot of you already know how to make tags, but I, I am in, a, in the T-swap with just one person um, that was looking to swap and didn't get a chance to get in, so I said I would swap with her, and I did get her swap in, and I noticed that it's there's a lot of purple in it, so I imagine that's her favorite color. So um, I'm going to work on that swap for her, but as, as I'm working on that swap for her, I'm going to be doing tutorials, small tutorials, like for beginner swappers on how to make a sturdy tag, you know, how to break up different colors, you know, you know, just kind of, or, or just, I, I don't know at all guys, but this is, this is just my opinion and that's all it is. So anyway, to start off, I use this tag die from Sizzix and, um, and you don't have to use it. You don't have to use this tag die. There's the uh, number on there. Uh, and it is by Sizzix. And it comes with the stamp set. And it does come with all these tags. Now the first one that I saw use this was. I think it was Miss Erica. Who is ScrapDiva29 here on YouTube. And you know guys. We all egg each other on. So anyway. I saw her use this die. And I had to go and hunt it down. And I did. And I absolutely love it. I haven't used it very much, but, you know, I do love it. So, and the beauty of this is that it comes with the sentiments, and it also comes with the tags. So that's what I like about this. And I did purchase mine on Amazon. I'm not going to put a link or anything, guys, because you have the item number, and you can go on there and find it. So I'm not going to put a link to this. So anyway, this is the one that I use, and I'm going to set it aside because I already did pre-cut my tags. And I'm going to share with you... Uh, how I do my tags now uh, you can if you don't have normally I will cut my front and because of the swap that I received kind of tells me a little bit about uh, uh, you know the colors that my partner likes so um, she used a lot of purple and um, so I imagine that she likes that color. And because the Paris, I mean the lavender, Prima Lavender paper has a lot of purple in it and lavender. So that's the paper line I'm going to use for her swap. And um, and two, I, I do my designer paper. The hardest part for me is this deciding on what uh, paper, I'm, designer paper I'm going to use. Because after I choose that, everything else kind of falls into place. So my first step is deciding what paper I want to use. Sorry, guys. Give me one sec. So, for me, it's this. It's deciding what um what designer paper I want to use. Then next of all, I use a con. I pick a contrasting color, and this one has a lot of deep colors, and it's it's kind of dark. And I wanted to lighten it up some, so it does have some white. And you can see by the uh, designer of this paper that they knew it was a dark color. So they kind of incorporated white to kind of brighten it. So, so that's what I do as well. I, I decided to pick a color, and usually I'll pick a, a color that's in the line. But I didn't want to go with purples or lavenders because it's got a lot of that already going on. And sometimes it's a bit much. 
or for me, my opinion, because I'm not really uh, a purple girl. Uh, I, I do like the color purple, but I find that it is difficult to work with. Um, but for, for me, I like more of the pastel colors. So anyway, uh, so I chose the white. And what I did with the white, I love to emboss the back of my tags. I always do that. So this one I embossed with, I'll share with you what I used. And I have a little pile right here on the side. What I used to emboss this was the uh, Crafter's Companion. It's a 3D embossing folder, and it's called called Rose Bouquet, and um, and it's so it's really really pretty. Let me see in the back. As you can see, it's got a mason jar, and then it's got the the rose border and flowers roses in the jar. So this is the one that I used. So I'm gonna set that aside. And, and all I did was cut out my tag, then I put it, I spritz it with water because the embossing is so deep on it that I want to make sure it doesn't tear my paper. So I kind of just spritz it with water a little bit to, to soften the fibers and I ran it through my embossing uh, folder in my, in my machine. Then my other piece, it's usually a three a three layer tag for me and this one is chipboard and I did edge the edges with silver paint so that's what I did and it doesn't matter that this looks rough on this side because it's going to be covered front and back but this is like the center of my tag um, or if you don't have chipboard you can use like this is a cereal box to me, I was going to use this to do my tag, but I felt it was still a little too flimsy. So I decided to go ahead with the chipboard. But you can use a cereal box, but I would say use at least two layers because the cereal box is very, uh, it's chipboard. It's kind of like chipboard, uh, but it, it's not very thick unless you have a thick box or something. So I would say either do two of the cereal boxes or any type of box or one of the chipboard. I'm going to use the chipboard. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the back, I mean the front of my tag. And I'm going to use the Beacon 3-in-1. And another thing, it's about glues, guys. Glues are, uh, you know, we have to be very careful. So all I'm doing is just adding glue on my tag. And the reason I use the Beacon 3-in-1 is because it does not warp my paper. And I love that. So I added the glue. Uh, when you do a tag and you're shipping it to different areas, especially when in that area, uh, I don't have my bone folder here, especially when in the area that you're sending to, sending it to is, is, is uh, hot and humid, well, chances are that your tag is going to come unglued. Not just your tag but whatever elements you put on it because hot glue tends to soften and uh, it doesn't work well with metal or anything like that. The only time I will use a hot glue is for um, like a temporary hold uh, and I usually I use it in combination with my other strong adhesive, wet adhesive that takes longer to dry and then I use my hot glue as a temporary hold. So by the time that my, uh, my, my, my hot glue, even if it gets weak, the other glue is already set and it's not going to melt. It's not going to come apart. So here's my layer of my tag. And if you notice, it's not warped. Even though I use plenty of that Beacon 3-in-1, there's no bubbles. There isn't anything because it doesn't warp your paper like some of the wet glues do. Uh, so that's one thing I like about the beacon. Now I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and I'm going to do the back. Now with my designer paper, I also went around the edge with my paint marker in silver. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to add glue to the back. And like I said, glue is very important, especially, you know, you know, we, we all started somewhere. And I hope that this advice that I give you, I mean, you can do whatever you want. It's, you know, it's your project, but uh, I'm hoping that this helps you to become a, uh, I'm not going to say a better crafter, but, you know, to become a little bit more uh, knowledgeable about what works and doesn't work. But because believe me, I've made the mistakes already. I have made the mistakes, so 
you know, when I first started out, I, I didn't know, you know, there was a lot of things I didn't know. And some things we find out the hard way. And hopefully this will avoid, uh, this will save you from learning the hard way. And uh, so now I adhered my other piece. And I absolutely love this embossing folder because it's very raised. So like I said, all I did was I kind of put my uh, piece of uh, my tag in the center of my embossing folder or whatever you want to capture from that embossing folder. That's where you put your piece of paper to run it through. And I can see this was a little bit crooked, it you know, but it still looks really nice. I always love to emboss the back of my tags because to be quite honest, I don't... Um, ever since I watched my friend Sabrina, who is the S Factor Studio... And that being said, before I forget, she always does another tag, an extra tag. So if the if the recipient of this tag wants to reuse it, all they do is take off that tag that has a to and from, and they can reuse the tag again by adding simply adding another tag and the to and from. So anyway, that being said, Sabrina is uh, is having a birthday challenge, and I think it's up to March twenty eighth, and. Um, her giveaway is awesome, guys. It's a very nice package that she's giving away. So, um, and, and in that video, she's telling you what she wants. And one of the things that she does want is a sturdy tag. So if you want to enter that challenge, I recommend that you go over to her channel and kind of just take a, 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 a a notepad and a pencil or something and write down because she wants a sturdy tag. This is how you make a sturdy tag and I don't blame her. I like sturdy tags too. So this is the beginning of mine. Anyway, she's doing a great challenge and I will link her video, her giveaway challenge, her birthday challenge in the description box. And um, I'm sorry for being absent for so long you guys, but I wasn't feeling well and and now I've just started to feel a little bit better so hopefully I can get some work done or some crafting done now if you don't have a uh, one of those uh, machines or pliers that set the grommets or the eyelets in your tags that's okay because you have a chipboard piece in the middle that's gonna keep it sturdy and if you don't have one there they do have a punch by we are memory keepers that does the little hole the reinforcers for the holes and it gives it a more finished look so if I had to, if I if I was trying to save money but I wanted my work to look good I probably would not buy the crocodile uh, setter eyelet setter I would probably buy the punch because it's more economical and then I can punch out in any color that I want but I would definitely use a chipboard tag in the center so this gives you a lot of options where you can punch it out in any any color of paper that you want for this one I did it in silver and even though I do have the eyelet setter I'm just trying this is more like for like I said for beginners when you don't have all the tools and you want to do it as economically as possible but just by adding this little piece it gives my tag a finished look see how nice that looks now, if I had not added that, it wouldn't have looked as nice or as finished. Um, it wouldn't have looked as nice or as finished unless I used a metal uh, grommet or eyelet, however you want to call it. I call them either. And there's my other one. So now my tag looks finished. So that's one way to save money if you're a beginner in crafting and and you want your tags to look you know well made uh, by using the punch and punching out any type of metallic or any color or any it doesn't have to be metallic but if you want it to look more like an eyelet of course you would do something in a foil paper so here it is guys this is my tag now listen that's a sturdy tag. If I had only done it with paper, one layer of paper, you wouldn't even hear this. This is because it's chipboard. But if I had only done it in paper, it, it would not have been pretty. So here's my base already, guys, the beginning. Now, there's a lot of purple going on in here. And if you're not going to put anything else on it, that's fine. But you typically, you don't want to add any more purple to this because it, it's already got a bunch. Or as far as I'm concerned, I like things in moderation. Now, 
I did uh, make out a little bear. Uh, this is by Cottage Cuts. And my coloring skills aren't that great, guys. And I could have just cut them out, cut her out in brown and, and be done with it. But I want to learn how to color. So I've been playing and experimenting. But this is the one that I used. And she's called Romper Bear by uh, Scrapping Cottage. Uh, so, like I said, I'm not going to leave any links to any of this stuff, uh, but I'm showing you what it looks like and that, and who makes it and what the name is. That way you can find it. And there is the number on it. It's CC4X4501. So that's the one I'm, I used. And like I said, I didn't do a good job coloring, but I'm trying to learn. So I'm going to continue to do it now. When you cut this out, it is a whole plate, and what I did is I cut it out in white. I could have cut it out in, br in a light brown and then kind of uh, colored that in as well with my markers, but I just did it in white, um, and it'll cut out the whole body of the bear with the arms already attached, and then it cuts out the arms by itself again. So I kind of put them together because I wanted them to be, uh, to have some kind of shape and form. So that's why I added both arms. I could have left it without, but I really wanted to, you know, put some uh, dimension in it and shape it. And I did kind of round the belly so the belly will stick out. And, and I went ahead and used purple, lavender, even though there's a lot of purple going on. But because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a white shape behind it where that breaks up all the purple. See where I'm going with this? even though there's a lot of purple on my tag because I'm using um, a putting a white background on her it stands out but before I do that and I do have uh, a little piece of thick chipboard on the back if I wanted it to be even higher of course then I would just double up but one is fine for me so I'm gonna go ahead and um, add this here and I also have a doily, so I'm going to show you. Like, I'm going to show you, and you kind of want to play with a couple colors. So I thought, well, maybe in silver. But when I put the silver and I add this, it looks fine. It, it really does look fine. It looks okay. But when I add the white doily, for some reason, for me, it stands out more. So I'm going to use the white doily today, but either would look good. And what I'm going to do is I want my doily to be, this is a doily by, by Cherry Lynn. And let me share that with you. Um, I've had it a long time. I don't even know if they still make it. But this is called Sophie's Heart Mini Doily by Cherry Lynn. And there is the item number on that. I don't know if they still make it or not, but that's what I use. But any doily, even a paper doily would work. The beauty of a die is you can punch it, you can cut it out in any, die cut it in any color you want. So anyway, I'm going to do the white and I'm going to add some glue. And and just here and there, not too much of nothing, you know, because it, it it's going to stick. It, it's not going to move because I am going to put a layer on top of it. So let's just add a little bit of glue and I do want it to stick down a little bit and I kind of want it centered. So there's that. And I used again wet glue. Wet glue on paper will stay. Hot glue might or might not. So I recommend, me personally, either use a double sided permanent adhesive tape or use a, a, a wet glue because that's not going to fall apart. So my next step is to put my uh, other piece up here. Now for this, I'm going to go ahead and use the beacon. Three and one for the back. And I hope that this is helpful uh, to all the new crafters, because I really want you to succeed in, in everything that you do, you know, and hopefully uh, save you from uh, things falling apart. And, you know, that that's not pretty when that happens. And because it's happened to me, I'm not saying it hasn't happened to me. It's happened to me, and I hopefully will will avoid this from happening to you. So we're going to add this piece here. Make sure it's straight. And the the thing with the beacon, because it is wet, it does. If you you know you're not lined up right. It does give you time to uh, 
you know shift your paper slide it back here or there see now there is dimension between this layer at my tag and my chipboard but not very much because I wanted it to be subtle so there's that I didn't want too much sometimes I do sometimes I don't now in the swap I said we had to incorporate a bear somewhere in our swap so she's what I made for for uh, as far as incorporating the bear into my swap so I'm going to sit her right here and I'm gonna adhere her but not with the beacon I'm gonna adhere her with the the art glitter glue uh, and this is called art, art glitter glue but it's not glitter it's just glue and it dries clear so the only place that I'm going to add uh, adhesive is going to be on her, her little paws down here not so you know just in places that I know will be touching um, the paper and let me put this back in here because I do not want my glue to dry you know guys I can't see that well anymore even with my glasses there so I'm going to go ahead, and if you notice, guys, even though I use lavender, I passed it through the embossing folder. So even though it's just lavender, she's got some pattern and textures going on on her, on her little uh, dress. And I'm just going to set her down right here. Hello, everybody. Ah, there she is, guys. Good morning. Good morning. And then I'm going to shift her over, make sure she's in the middle. Sometimes I'll do it to the left, sometimes to the right. For this one, I'm just going to set her in the middle. And now I know that uh, she's not going to come undone because I used the wet glue. If I had used hot glue, quite possibly she would have come off. So my next thing I want to add is a cup. I have these cups. I have these cups that are by Seven Gypsies, and they're like uh, bone china. And I love this gray one with the the it matches. It's very similar to the Prima paper that I'm using. So I'm going to put this teacup in front of her as an extra embellishment. And even though I'm not going to put a sentiment, I will do my sentiment on something else, or just incorporate sentiments. So I could even put it in the back of my tag. So I'm just going to add this little teacup. I'm going to say about there, but I am going to add some dimension tape. Now, even though this is adhesive, because it is, it's going to glue very nicely to, um, uh, I'm going to cut this. It's going to glue very well to this tape, but, but, if I were to, uh, not add more adhesive I think that would come back to uh, I think it would be a mistake to be honest so I'm gonna go ahead and add some more of the art glitter glue even though like I said it is it, it is adhesive but a lot of times they tend to come off so I'm gonna add more more uh, wet glue so it won't so I don't have to worry that when somebody is showing my project that my project is falling apart so I'm just gonna kinda put the little teacup right there under her little hands there it is and the reason I only put the piece of tape on the bottom is because the upper part of the cup is going to be sitting like where her belly is and that's kinda raised so I want it to be even with uh, the bottom I don't want the cup to be sticking up and the bottom flat. This kind of makes it all uh, even and level. So when this dries, I'm not going to have to worry that my teacup is going to fall. How super cute is that, guys? Isn't that pretty? Now, and remember what I said, there is a way to use those, those dark colors, but you do want to break it up with a lighter color. Now, <clears throat> I have a beautiful butterfly here that is from Renee's bouquets now it's it's on some dimensional tape and I don't want it to be quite as dimensional uh, it might be okay yeah I think I'm gonna leave it and I'm gonna add that little butterfly right here guys but I am gonna bend her antennas up but again 
I'm going to add more of the glitter glue because I don't want it to come off. Like I said, sometimes these things do tend to come off. And I don't want that to be an issue. So I'm going to add the, the glue there. And I'm going to just set it right here at an angle. How pretty is that? It's so pretty. And this is the little butterfly that came in the business card uh, that uh, Miss Renee Renea sent with my shipping, my uh, birthday whip, uh, goodies. She had this on the business card, and I thought it was beautiful. And I took it off the business card, and I use everything. Now, the frame that I used for the back of the bear is this one that was gifted to me by one of my friends. I think it was Carolyn, who is Tea Time and Dolls. I'm not for sure, uh, but I think it was her. And, but this, it doesn't have to be this shape. It can be any shape. This is just the one I chose. You know, whatever you have. If you have a die cutting machine, you can do that as well. Now, I also have another die, and I didn't bring it out. But I have a little spoon here, a little silver spoon. And then I added some diamond dust to the edge. Now, if you don't have diamond dust and you have glitter that's white, iridescent, that will work. It doesn't have to be glitter glue. So I'm going to go ahead and put this like, oh, somewhere. I want the spoon to show because of the, uh, the sugar on it. So I'm going to just lay it right across there. And I am going to, again, adhere it with some wet glue. Even though this is foil on the front, it's paper on the back. It's not foil. So this is going to adhere pretty well. So let's add some glue here. And just kind of set it on the arm of the little bear and right here. Sometimes you've got to hold it for a minute. So there's a the little spoon with the sugar. How cute is that? So but we're not done we're not done yet, guys. If you notice that the Prima paper has a lot of different shades of green because it's like a garden. So it's got all these roses, all the foliage. And what we're going to do is I have these little, uh, just little die cuts. Actually, this is a punch. And I'm going to add some little uh, foliage right underneath the butterfly. Uh, maybe one up here somewhere. Let me see. I think one would look cute there. Oh, I don't know. Maybe here. So I'm going to add some glue to it. Again, I'm using the wet glue because I know that it's going to uh, stay put. So there's that. I'm going to make a little cluster. This right here. Kind of letting it curve up on this, um, on the uh, the cup. And I have one more. Where where do I want to put this? Maybe over here somewhere. Yeah, I'm gonna add this over here. I'm going to add some more glue right here. And this is kind of the way I put things together. Now, if you're not sure, you can just kind of temporary, temporarily lay it down. And then go from there. Decide if, if you like the way it looks, where you have it. And if you don't, then you can certainly always move it. So I'm going to glue that down. Now, see, I can st tell that this butterfly is still wet. Uh, but it will set. It will set. Let me put my pin back in my glue because if I don't, then I'm going to have a, a problem. Now, now I'm going to add one of these lavender uh, little uh, paper roses in my project. And let's see if I can coil this on something. I usually like to coil the... Uh, The little wire to make it look like a little uh, coil, a little spring. 
and that's what I do. Well, I'll do what I do, guys. I just dropped it. Why are you dropping stuff for? I know I'm dropping stuff. And I'm going to add the little flower right in here somewhere um, to kind of cover this white. Now, if I wasn't going to use the, the, the coil, I could actually cut that little piece off and just flatten it. But I do want to use the coil. So I'm not going to, um, to do that. And again, guys, I'm using the beacon. Um, there is also like a wet... Um, like a wet uh, hot glue that works very well but I'm not using that I'm using I'm using uh, the beacon and just kind of holding it in place for a minute now right here I think it would be okay to use uh, hot glue I really think it would be fine but uh, it's totally up to you but definitely for the most work on this tag I am using I am using the, um, on this one, I'm going to actually cut the bottom off because I don't want to use that. See, I cut it off completely. Here I am going again with my, with my Beacon 3-in-1. And in, with this, I would probably add just, you know, a little dab of this and then a dab of hot glue. And normally that, that does the trick. And if the one doesn't hold, the other one does. Uh, let me see. I think I want to set this. Let me pick up the wings. Um, I think I want to set it somewhere in this area. Ah! I got glue on me. So I'm going to set this right here. And I'm actually going to try and... I was going to try and smash it down, but let's see. These you can normally smash down to kind of flatten them. There's that. And I don't think I'm going to add one over here the way I originally was going to. I think I'm going to settle for these two. And... Let's put the uh, hanger on it. And I, like I said, I'm, pr I'm probably going to add my sentiment to the back right here somewhere. And that way that kind of covers my sentiment and it covers my teddy bear. But look at how beautiful that is. Isn't that pretty? So I have two options. I can either use, I was going to use this with the gold edge, but I changed my mind because, um, actually I think I have one with the silver. Abby, look in that, my first one like this, but with the silver edge. This one? Yep. With the silver edge? Yes. So I want something like this, guys. Because my accent color is silver, that's kind of what I want to use. Now, the reason I got this little tiny one is to add the little, here's a little extra tag. I told you I was going to add the to and from. And here's my silver ribbon, my white ribbon with the silver edge. Because, like I said, I don't want to use too much purple anymore. You know, I want to break up all that purple where it's pleasing to the eye. Like I said, I do like purple, but in moderation. And, you know, it, it, and like I said, purple is a hard color to work with. But once you start learning the tricks of breaking up the color where you only get uh, a little peek here and there, you will see that, uh, you know, you might be a little bit happier with your project. So all I do is I cut a piece of, um, of ribbon and I pass it through the front of my tag. I pass it through the front of my tag. And I'm going to pull this out, but I'm not going to close it yet. I'm just going to leave it like that for a second because I want to add the little piece here on this little extra tag that I'm going to add and that way the recipient if, if they decide to keep it and use it all they have to do is take off this little tag and um, all they have to do is take off the little tag and 
you know, add another little tag to it and reuse it. Can I help you? Seriously, guys? <laughs> Everybody wants in on the YouTube, guys. It's because we love you. Everyone needs to know we love you so much. You hear that, guys? Do you all believe it? They would love to be loved like this. <laughs> so anyway, here, all I did was tie a little knot. And I can leave the edges like this, or I can cut them off. I'll see what they look like. And then I'm just going to pass this through through the little loop that's hanging on the back of my tag. And then I'm going to get these two tails that I had folded over. And I'm going to pull it. And that kind of makes this, this little nice little uh, knot right here. Now, see the back? I don't like the way these look. So I'm going to snip them off. I'm going to snip them off and then I'm going to pull them hopefully to hide behind the knot that I have going on there. Hopefully I can get it to go in there because uh, I really don't like the way it looks. You know, you want your work to look uh, nice and, you know, cover all the things that aren't really necessary to be seen. There. Okay. So there is my uh, tag. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to add a bow in the front with the same ribbon. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it on my in my hand right here. And I'm just going to go around. And I, I don't want a double uh, bow. I just want one. So I'm just going to cut a piece off right here. And I'm going to pass it through the V right here in my fingers. I'm going to pass it through there. Sorry, guys. That's ink from my silver marker. I'm going to pass it through. I'm not going to let go of this. And then I'm going to pass it. What I'm going to do after it's sticking out from underneath. I'm going to pass it through here. But through the back and come out this side. So that's what I'm going to do. It might be a little difficult for you to see. That's why I'm explaining to you what I'm doing. Because sometimes when we're trying to show you something. It's a little difficult to do. There. See how I passed it underneath that. And now I'm just going to pull it. I'm just going to pull it to tighten my little knot there. And there's my bow. That's going to be my perfect bow right there. So I'm going to take my fingers out. And here is that perfect bow to go on my tag. And I usually like to cut these like at an angle. And you can burn the edges so it doesn't unravel. It's totally up to you. I normally, when I'm making bows, uh, for hair bows, I will. And now I'm going to add some glue right here. And I'm going to, again, now right here, you could use the hot glue, guys, because uh, fabric to fabric glues really well with hot glue. And it'll stay put. It's not going to come off. But not, oops, sorry, guys. I'm actually working on my setup to record. A little bit better where my camera's on my tripod and not on the table I'm working on so it doesn't bounce around like it just did right now so I'm gonna glue that right there and and typically right now I would I would be using hot glue for that and then I'm gonna grab another one of these little lavender flowers and I'm gonna cut it off I'm gonna snip most most of the wire off See how I cut it off? And I'm actually going to take it in my hands and I'm just going to smash that that little um, tip right there. I don't want to take it off completely because then my ribbon rose will unravel. That's what that is, a ribbon rose. So right now hot glue would be, it right now would be an excellent time to use your hot glue. And that's going to go there. And I'm going to hold this down. Hopefully, it will not unravel on me. So there's my tag, guys. There is my sturdy tag that's not going to come undone. Um, and whenever the recipient gets it, hopefully it will be intact. Because, like I said, this has happened to me. And hopefully... This will help you and teach you 
how to avoid that from happening to you. Let me get all these little bits out of the way. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, you could add some bling or some sequins. I'm going to add these little tiny silver hearts that I have here. And it doesn't matter in what direction that they, uh, whether they're straight or not. I'm just going to add them here and there. Uh, maybe one right here. And what I do, and again, because it's paper, so I'm using paper. This tool, this wax tip tool, is what I use to adhere sequins, to even paper piece this little bear together. And it, it does, see how it picks up the heart? And I'm just going to put one there. I'm going to add another one here. I'm going to add another one right here. And I'm just kind of scattering the little hearts here and there. Mm -hmm. One more right here. So there's my tag. What do you guys think? I hope that you like what I created. And um, and hopefully this helps you and kind of shows you, you know, what glues to use for certain types of materials. Um, like I said, hot glue works really well with fabric or ribbon or lace, anything like that. Even the beacon does too. But for a quick hold, hot glue works. Depending on how sheer your lace or trim is, you want to be careful. If it's very, very sheer, I would say do maybe the beacon or something like that. Um, because, you know, most of the time, typically you would sew that, but in paper crafting we really don't. Or I don't. I imagine there's some that do, but I do not. So here's my tag that I created. I hope that you like my tag. I hope that this helped you and this gives you an idea. See, I have purple peeking out. My bears even has lavender clothes on, but the purple is not overpowering the whole tag. So that's, you know, like I said, purple is really hard to work with because I really have to give it a lot of thought. But I have found that by separating your purples with a lighter color that's in your your paper, uh, it gives a, a, a better overall appearance. So thanks for watching, you guys. I hope everyone has a great day. I hope that this tutorial was easy to follow for those of you who are beginners because this is for beginners. How to how, For you to learn how to make a sturdy tag and what glues to use, you know, the do's and the don'ts of glue. And um, and pretty much how to break your colors apart when you have so much of one color going out. Then you've got to pull out those light colors so it doesn't overpower everything. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope everyone has a great day and God bless. Bye.